So Mary, the mother of our Jesus, was young. Oh, we don't know exactly how old she was, but we think she was young, maybe, maybe in her early teens. When in a particular moment, hmm, in a particular moment, she realized from the inside out that she was one with God and all life. She had a moment. Yeah. My sense is, you have a story. No exceptions. My sense is this, everybody in this room has a story. Hmm? All of you at home have a story about a moment. When your eyes were opened, your eyes and your head and the eyes of your heart were opened in a different way than they'd ever been opened before. And in that moment, life became more spacious. Frankly, life became more livable. Huh? Can you think of a moment when something happened and you became less identified with your fears and you became more comfortable in your own skin, like as is, you know? A moment. So God's like any parent. Hmm? God, the parent of all of us, is like any parent. God really wants one thing for us. You know what it is? Oh, you know what I'm going to say. <laughs> God wants us to be loving. That is the beginning and the end of God's dream. God wants us to be loving. God wants to use us. I mean, like God wakes up every day, like before his feet hit the floor in heaven, God's like, I'm going to use them, all of them, today to spread love. And the deal is this. In order for us to really be usable, hmm? to really be truly loving, we got to love ourselves. Put another way, somehow we got to become comfortable being ourselves. We got to have a moment huh? where it just all makes sense, even if just for a second, it's okay to be me. So the deal is this, if you're not comfortable in your own skin, you know what happens, right? Any human beings in the room ever not been comfortable in their skin? A bunch of us may not be comfortable right this second. It's a deal, right? No, it happens to me all the time. When I'm not comfortable in my own skin, you know what I do? I spend the lion's share of my time in fear. And when I'm stuck in fear, what I do is try to change everybody and everything all around me, including myself. so I can get rid of this fear. Mary's just like us. Huh? No, Mary, the mother of our Lord, is just like us. God chose Mary to be the mother of Jesus, but he had to do something first. First, God had to bring Mary to a moment. When the angel Gabriel, y'all know the moment, right? When the angel Gabriel came to tell Mary that she was going to be the mother of the Christ, which is kind of a big deal, Mary froze. Huh? Oh, she froze. She froze for just a second. And for just a second, in that moment of frozenness, she thought about being afraid. She considered yielding to the uncertainty she had about herself. She thought about saying no. But Gabriel, the angel, y'all know this story, right? Said, Mary, don't be afraid. You know? Don't be afraid. God thinks you're perfect as is. And Mary had a moment. She said, okay, I'll bite. And then she said her most famous words. Let it be. She said, let it be. 
And in that moment, a space opened up inside of Mary as all her fears and illusions dissolved for a moment. And in that moment, Mary became perfectly usable. Perfectly usable for the cause of love. Hmm? For a moment, it all made sense. Let it be. So, you have a story. However far back you have to go, you have a story somewhere in the narrative of your own life. You have a story about a moment huh? when grace opened you up. So, when I was 13 years old, I was at my most Awkward. Anybody remember being 13? Maybe there's some 13 years <laughs> year olds in the room. When I was 13, y'all, I was a train wreck. I was a mountain of mess. I was at my most awkward. I was the shyest human being in my 13th year on planet Earth. I was completely uncool, like registered as such. This one, awkward, shy, uncool. I didn't have a self-confident bone in my body. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh shoot, am I talking to the cool kids? <laughs> Maybe this is going to be my moment. No, I was just, it was terrible. Oh, it was awkward. I was so shy that my nickname when I was a little kid was Mr. Nobody because when people asked me what my name was, I was too shy to tell them and so I said nobody. Hmm? Trump that, baby. So in my 13th year, I'm at a fall church camp, on a, a fall retreat at a church camp down in the Diocese of Atlanta where I grew up. One of those standard church camp weekend retreats. I was a camper, and my oldest sister, Laura, was working as a counselor at the retreat. She's six years older than I am. Now, Laura, in truth, she probably wasn't much cooler than I was, but she was older than me, and so she seemed to me, anyway, to be a heck of a lot more secure and self-confident. And I don't remember much at all about the content of the retreat. I do remember that I had a crush on a girl that I would never in one million years talk to. I do remember that I was surrounded by kids who were all the things I was not. They were popular. They were cool. They were good looking. They could talk to each other. You know, I mean, they, could. they were the kings, right? And the queens, I thought, of all the surrounding areas and high schools, and I didn't feel like I was any of those things. Does anybody in this church know what I'm talking about? Okay, I got a few. For our closing worship service at the weekend retreat, we did sort of the standard thing, you know, on these church retreats. We all crowded into the dining hall for the Eucharist. And of course, we're kids, there's no pews or chairs, we all sat on the floor, right, sort of cross-legged on the floor. The service went along as an Episcopal Eucharist. It went along like normal until the peace, the passing of the peace in a church camp setting is not like the passing of the peach in other, peace in other settings. Do you all know what it's like? It's like Mardi Gras or a sales convention. It's a 20-minute, 30-minute hug fest. Folks, don't just shake hands and sort of peace sign to each other or to the person next to them. Folks work the whole room at a church camp retreat peace, hugging and chatting it up with everybody there. I'm pretty sure most of the people at the peace passing at a church camp literally talk to everybody in the room. And they all tell each other all manner of stories. And it really does take 30 minutes. It really is like Mardi Gras. For most people, but not for me. When the peace broke out, I nodded to the people right around me. Huh? And then I froze. No, I'm serious, I froze. I, I couldn't move my body. I froze. It scared me to death. Every cell in my body turned even more inward, even more constriction came upon me, even more shyness bore down on me, and I just stood there in the middle of the peace, passing chaos, while the world and the people in the room spun all around me. 
And then it got worse. Because dread. Anybody know about dread? Dread started to swallow me whole. Like a dragon just come to swallow me whole. The dread dragon started to swallow me up. I was frozen in place. I could go nowhere. The odd introvert, right? In a room full of what I was sure were pure extroverts. And after what seemed like about 17 hours, I felt a presence next to me. I dare not look, but I felt an energy of warmth, somebody next to me. And I thought, oh God, who wants to hug me? <laughs> like, this is not going to go well. But I turned my head. Hmm? Big sister. It was Laura. It was Laura. Remember I told you she was working as a counselor? Well, she spotted me, didn't she, Jan, across the room? She spotted me, frozen little brother, and she came to me. It was Laura, my big sister, standing right there, and I turned my head, and she smiled at me. And then she said this. She said, this kind of thing is tough on guys like us, isn't it? And I said, yeah. Why? And she said, oh, I don't know. People like us, we just don't do this kind of thing very easily. I don't know, we just never learned how to do this kind of thing very easily. And then she said, it's okay, though. She said, it's okay, Hendry, just to be you. Don't be afraid, just be you. And let me tell you what she didn't do. She didn't drag me around that room and introduce me to everybody. She didn't try to teach me how to be more extroverted and less awkward. She didn't try to jolly me up. She didn't try to get me to be somebody I am not. What she did was channel God's accepting love. Huh? By saying to me, what I believe is the one thing we all most want to hear. The one thing that everybody in this room, if we'd be honest, most wants to hear. Which is, it's okay to just be you. Big sister said, this is hard for guys like us, isn't it? And that's okay. Don't be afraid. God thinks you are perfect. Let it be. Let it be. Y'all, that girl was 17 years old. But I thought she was the wisest, oldest, best, most grown-up, loving person in any direction. Because she was for me the voice and warm presence of the living God. In a moment that I felt pretty sure my name was forever, Mr. Nobody. Huh? Yeah. It was a moment where everything opened up for a moment. And 35 years later, oh, I still, I'm still me, huh? Now, 35 years later, I'm still me. But I'll tell you what, I can walk into any room anywhere, and I got a shot at just being me and it being okay. Because Laura gave me permission and stood stock still beside me, channeling God's accepting love when I needed it the most. And the deal is this, if I can be me, no, 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 if you can be you, if we can be us, if we can be comfortable in our own skin, then we become profoundly usable. Huh? 
God will use us, can use us further and further, just like he used Mary to bear the Christ into the world. God can use us to spread love. And the wonderful thing about having a moment and knowing it, huh? knowing the story of it, and if you're sitting in that pew thinking, great for you, Henry, but I've never had a moment, you have. You have. I know you have. Huh? The great thing about having a moment is when I doubt, and I do, y'all. Does anybody ever just wake up insecure? Okay, Mary and I do. Huh? When I doubt and I do, I can go back to the moment. Does that make sense? I can go back to the moment. It's like scripture, y'all. I can go back to the moment when God used Laura to open me up, to set me free. And it's the pearl of great price. It's a treasure right there in the present. So Laura, big sister, huh? 35 years later. She's very sick today. Yeah. She's really sick with a really, really challenging cancer diagnosis right now. And I asked her the other day, she's as buoyant as ever, but she's very sick. I asked her the other day, I said, are you sad? I said, because I am, are you, are you sad? Huh? She said, no, I'm not. She said, I thought about it. I had a moment, but I'm not sad. I don't despair because I decided, Henry, like I had a moment and I decided, you know, if I'm going to die, then I've got a lot to do. That's what she said to me. And I want to do it all so I don't have time to be afraid or sad. So now I don't despair. And you know what I think happened? Hmm? I think maybe the I think maybe the angel Gabriel, I think this, Mary, I think maybe the angel Gabriel whispered in Laura's ear, don't be afraid. Let it be. You're perfect. And I think in that moment, something opened up. And she became comfortable in her skin even with all the cancer eaten, her up inside. Because Laura knows what God's favorite thing to do is. Use God's children to spread love. And I think in her moment, she realized that God will use Laura, maybe even more, to spread love, even though she's dying. Because there ain't nothing more powerful than somebody who's dying. Huh? Is there? Being so buoyant with grace and love. So what I want to know is where in your life you've got a story, huh? I know you do. Where in your life have you heard that whisper, felt that presence? Don't be afraid. Let it be. Like what's your moment of letting those words or having those words open you up and then my further question is, who needs to hear that from you, from me, from us today? Who might God use us huh, to enter into their moment? Does that make sense? Because that's what this thing is all about. See, God wants to use us to spread love. Isn't that just the best thing? What a moment. Amen.